all-star break signaled a brief stop for the NBA regular season, but still delivered unprecedented entertainment. Oh, exclamation point! But now, as the second half of the season shifts into gear, it's time to accelerate toward the playoff drive. LeBron and company continue speeding down the highway with American muscle. There's only one way to satisfy the Cavs, winning it all. The Bulls, however, are heading in the opposite direction and face a steep climb back into contention. Navigating the twists and turns of the imposing West, the Clippers are revving up for a strong finish. While San Antonio keeps humming along on cruise control, pacing themselves for another championship run and looking for any opening to pass the Warriors. The second half ramps up tonight on TNT. Eight weeks to go in the regular season. LeBron and the Cavs, not surprisingly, leading the East. And tonight, hosting a Chicago team that's fallen into the seventh spot. And later, Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs face the Clippers on the road for the first time since L.A. took Game 7 of Round 1 last spring. We're going back to work on TNT. All right, we're going to get things started with the Bulls and the Cavs, called by Kevin Harlan, Reggie Miller, and Ali LaForce, as we welcome you to TNT NBA Tip-Off, presented by Auto Trader. Welcome to Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Chuckster's down there, Kenny the Jet right here, Shaq not here tonight. Oh, no, we fired him. It's about not, time. No, not feeling well. Oh, it's, it's, not it's, feeling well. Yeah, that's, feeling that's well. what we're told. He looks so oh, like, like man, that. Poor good. little Shaq. Oh, he needs a little man, he's down for the count. <laughs> but... Thankfully, uh, since it's the trade deadline, we have David Aldridge, who's been here all day on NBA TV, joining us for the pregame show to recap the, uh, the action or the, the lack of action at this, <laughs> at this afternoon's trade deadline. You know, D.A., I, I pulled this, uh, I, I printed this back out because I made it last year. Yep. All those moves in the trade A lot deadline of trades. last year, almost yep. 40 yep. uh, that we had last year. Why so quiet today? A couple of reasons. Number one, everybody's got cap room. Because of us, frankly, and, and the other, ESPN giving them all that TV money. So next summer, everybody's going to have cap room. Everybody thinks they're going to sign Kevin Durant. So everybody's keeping their cap room for next summer. Number two, I, I think, frankly, I think a lot of teams are intimidated by what Golden State's done this year. And they're like, why bother? We're not going to beat the Warriors anyway. Yeah. So why give up assets for, in a futile effort to beat Golden State? Um, and number three, I just think that um, a lot of teams – the guys that were out there and that were available just weren't quite that dominant, over-the-top player that you would so risk gonna, future picks for and future players for. Let's take a look at uh, some of the names that did move uh, on this trade deadline at the uh, past 3 o'clock this afternoon Eastern time. Team, you're about to see the Cleveland Cavaliers adding uh, Channing Fry. Chucks, do you like that move? I think he helps them. I like Channing Fry. I got a, the privilege to watch him play in Phoenix. He's going to be great with LeBron and Kevin and Kyrie. I know you like that Jeff Green move. I love you, the Jeff Green. I yeah. thought that was the most significant move of today. You know, everybody know I love Jeff Green. Jeff Green frustrates me because I think he can be a perennial all-star. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great situation for him because he doesn't have to be the leader. But this was a great – first of all, they gave up nothing to get him. But Doc Rivers, whatever they paid him, he earned it today because they got a lot better with Jeff Green. Yeah, how about this How about this Clipper, this Clipper situation, though? Jet, uh, you pick up Josh Smith and Lance Stevenson in the offseason to add to this mix, and now they're both gone. Yeah, they're both gone. You know, it, it, sometimes you have to realize when it doesn't work. And, you know, Doc Rivers, obviously, uh, you know, Josh plays better in Houston. He's playing, he's playing his, out of his mind again. He's playing comfortable basketball. That's a great situation and a great fit for him. And Lance Stevenson just never found minutes for him. So I don't even know if Lance would have played well for them. He didn't have to find <laughs> the minutes. But to me, the, to, I, I think that the quiet assassin today – was Detroit. I yeah. think that they have put themselves in position to possibly contend in the top two or three spots. Well, uh, I, I really do. Well, I think Tobias that, Harris, I think Donatus Tobias Monte Harris, Eunice, and Marcus Thornton. Tobias Harris, to me, is probably the one, one of the most underrated players in this league because of the way he played in Orlando. But he shoots the outside jumper, he rebounds, he puts the ball on the floor, versatile enough to do multiple things. And then you add a guy who can really just knock down shots and Thornton, you know, and, and then, you know, Dante says, uh, these are three mm -hmm. top eight rotation guys. They're not three guys that just yeah. added to well, your rotation. They're three guys that are going to play for you well, and play major minutes. Well, I agree. In the East. He, 
they that the, so, so should solidify them making the playoffs, but like they're not gonna beat Cleveland or Toronto. But I do agree. But I will tell you. It's debatable on Toronto now. It's debatable. Well, you because be, I think well, that if you look at, all, and I, I've it's never debatable. said I've never said Toronto is gonna beat Cleveland either. Okay. Number one. Right. It's but I will tell you one move. That you talking on the Randy Foy. To Oklahoma City. I'm a big Randy Foy fan. I think he's underrated. I think he really helps Oklahoma City because, listen, let, who are we can you got to beat the Golden State Warriors. And he gives them another perimeter player who can, when they go small. So I actually think that was, to, to me, the under-the-radar move. Why didn't Pau Gasol move? Why didn't Dwight Howard move? Why didn't Atlanta make any deals? I mean, they, they picked up Heinrich, but... There was talk about Horford. There was talk yeah. about Teague. Yeah. Uh, talk about Corver. I mean, and they didn't do anything. Well, I would say that for Atlanta, what they were asking for are multiple firsts and, and young players for Horford, which I understand is their best player. You want you, you want as much as you can for your best player, but nobody was willing to give them that for the reasons we talked about before. Same thing with Howard, and even more so considering Dwight's back. And as Doc Rivers told me a long time ago, backs don't get better, right? Bad backs don't get better. Um, and he's older. And what is he going to ask for as a free agent? You know, he's, his agent gets max dollars usually. So there weren't a lot of teams that were interested in that. And with Gasol, it was really more Sacramento wanting Gasol than Chicago wanting to move Gasol, and certainly not for what the Kings were offering. Um, I think with, for the Bulls, their thinking is, look, we love Powell. We want to resign him. But if we don't, we still got a pretty good team. We got a pretty good core to build around. Yeah, Ernie, but listen, the real reason, you can't give up valuable assets for guys who are not going to be on your team next year. That was the thing with Powell and Dwight. They both, Dwight's going to opt out of his contract, and Powell Gasol is a free agent, basically. So you can't give up good stuff if a guy's not going to sign with you long term. Those two were very simple for me. Uh, in, in why they didn't get traded today. The one that surprised me was names a lot. The one that surprised me was Teague. I thought Teague would get traded because he's yeah. a, on a he's on a controllable contract, and there's a lot of teams that could use a good lead point guard, and, including uh, Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. What is Atlanta? <laughs> David, I, this is a very fair question. What is the, the Hawks doing? Bringing in they got two good point guards, right. and they brought in a third good point guard. Yeah, well, well they got to decide if which one they want to keep and be the guy, and I think they're still in the process of deciding that. They have not committed to one of those guys yet, and they probably need to, well, one way or the other. We are uh, heading to break. We're going to uh, have more on Tia D NBA tip-off in just a second, but first, the uh, perfect match presented by Auto Trader. Who you got tonight? Bulls or Cavs, we want you, the fans, to tell, oh, 71%. Well, you uh, should not think what those other 29% are thinking. <laughs> but it's going to be a beatdown. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck with no idea on how Shaq got sick. <laughs> Must have been something from north of the border. We'll be back. We welcome you back. Charles uh, turned 53 this weekend. Send him your wishes using hashtag happy birthday uh -oh. Chuck. And please be as creative as you can. That's pretty creative right there uh, with the. Uh, that was Albert really Einstein. cool. You know, uh, I love me some uh, Krispy Kreme donuts. They sent me 53 boxes of donuts. I yeah, was, they were delivered right there to. Uh, I've had four already, Ernie. Have four you? Boxes? 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 No, not boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Specify, will you? I had 49 I had boxes had left. No, nobody I here. Had four nobody donuts, here. Donuts, fool. <laughs> nobody here didn't believe maybe it was four boxes. <laughs> it was. Uh, Bulls Thank you, Chris McCree. Up. <laughs> Kevin Reggie Alley standing by. Thanks for the heart attack. <laughs> 53 boxes. You want to eat 53 boxes? No, I'm eating about...